few weeks back one of my student he was complaining about a certain typical kind of symptoms like he was facing uh, like bloody kind of diarrhea vomiting was occurring fever was there and all these kind of the other symptoms itself he went to that of the medical uh, personnel okay and from there the pathological like testings were done over that of its fecal matter okay and it was been found that he was suffering or he was been contaminated by that of a typical kind of a special kind of bacterium named as shigella and he is like been affected by shigellosis the disease which has been caused by that of shigella itself so in that context only today we are going to discuss about that of some of the brief microbiological features of that of this bacterium okay which is responsible uh, behind causing many of that of the like uh, common bacillary dysentery symptoms in that of not only in our country in like throughout the world itself okay स्टूडेंट्स एक चीज याद रखिएगा ये जो पॉइंट है जो शिगेला एंड जो आज से हम लोग ये जो माइक्रोबायोलॉजिकल डिस्कशंस जो आज से हम लोग करने वाले हैं दीज आर ऑल इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर दैट ऑफ योर एएसआरबी नेट आईसीएआर एएसआरबी नेट अलोंग विद एनी अदर लेवल ऑफ द अदर कंपटीटिव एग्जाम्स लाइक सीएसआर नेट और एनी अदर काइंड ऑफ कंपटीटिव एग्जाम्स इटसेल्फ उनका जो माइक्रोबायोलॉजिकल जो फीचर्स आता है बैक्टीरिया का एंड एवरीथिंग ओके सो what we are going to focus on we are going to discuss over that of the structure of that of this structural feature of that of this bacterium ek cheez hame ye yaad rakhna hai ki ye jo bacteria hai ye bacteria ek rod shaped bacteria hota hai and ek non motile bacteria hota hai so whenever it is getting inside okay and mainly it used to get like uh, spread at through that of by that of i would say contaminated kind of that of the food itself especially those kind of that of the food which are raw consumed raw or uncooked okay like we can say raw seafood salads then many other kind of the other salad itself so why to wait for let's start our point of discussion itself and we are going to focus on that of this bacterium which we are representing it as shigella okay and which is a typical bacillus yes we are going to focus on that of the morphology the identification the isolation and the pathogenesis in brief of the of the shigella itself so now why the name the name the shigella actually the name shigella it is derived from its discoverer name shigella jo bacteria hai isko sabse pehle ek japanese scientist ne isko discover kiya tha jinka naam hai dr kiyoshi shiga okay and he had said that this bacterium it is the major cause behind that of bacillary dysentery okay during that period itself and aapko ek cheez yaad rakhna hai ki shigella is not a newly discovered species it is a very old discovered species itself and in each and every genera in each and every decade it is always for it is always creating a panic okay regarding that of its like the kind of the dysentery it can cause and all this things itself okay so now let's see something let's go for that of the classification the taxonomical sections of the other shigella If you are saying Shigella, it is having four major features: Shigella dysentery, Shigella flexneri, Shigella boidi, and Shigella sonei. Mainly, Shigella, it is a bacterium which is belonging to that of family Enterobacteriaceae itself. Because why I am saying Enterobacteriaceae? Because this is the like bacteria which goes inside of that of our like uh, body fluids itself. Okay, it goes inside of that of our body organs. Okay, and it damages, it causes the infection within that of our even our gastrointestinal tract also. it is belonging to that of the order enterobacterials and the enterobacteriaceae itself and among all these four species the most critical the most dangerous species is this shigella dysentery this is alone responsible for most of the epidemic of that of the like bacillary dysentery caused in that of in like throughout the world it's uh, uh, throughout the world itself especially in 
ट्रॉपिकल कंट्रीज जितने भी ट्रॉपिकल कंट्रीज हैं हमारे देश में इवन आई वुड से दैट लाइक कंसिडरिंग लाइक लाइक द फॉरेन कंट्रीज आल्सो एंड इन मेनी वेयर ओके दिस इज द बैक्टीरियम व्हिच इज रिस्पांसिबल टू कॉज दैट ऑफ द एपिडेमिक्स ऑफ सीवियर बेसिलरी डिसेंट्रीज ओके सो दैट इज द टेक्सोनॉमिकल सेक्शन सो नाउ व्हाट एक्चुअली हैपेंस let's say that if the person is present here like this and the person who is present here like this they are consuming certain kind of that of the contaminated food they are consuming certain kind of that of the contaminated food contaminated food means those kind of that of the food which are been infected by that of the shigella etc so they are like consuming that of these contaminated food itself now what is getting happened immediately shigella it will be reaching towards that of our it will be reaching towards that of our stomach area itself okay first of all it will be reaching towards that of our stomach area and from there it will be reaching to that of i would say that to that of the intestinal areas itself so now what is happening we all know very well that the stomach region is very famous for that of acidic ph itself but fortunately unfortunately i would say not fortunately unfortunately i would say that these bacteria they are actually showing certain kind of resistiveness wo kuch certain kind of resistance ko wo show karta hai against that of these kind of that of the acidic ph itself okay so based on which it thrives and it reaches to that of our intestine wo hamare yahan par intestine ki or wo reach karta hai first small intestine and then to that of the larger intestine itself now in the larger intestine within that of the colon itself it in habits it goes inside of that of our epithelial cells now when it is going inside of that of our or when it is infecting the epithelial cells let's say that if these can be that of the epithelial cells itself so now if this is the shigella bacterium okay generally it has been seen that the shigella bacterium it possesses special kind of toxin over that of its surface and that toxin we used to represent it as that of the shiga toxin itself so now these shiga toxin it gets inside of that of these epithelial cells of that of the stomach itself and when when it is getting inside of that of these epithelial cells the stomach itself now within that of these cell itself what is getting happened the ribosomes are remaining present which are found to which are mainly responsible to synthesize that of the protein so the shiga toxin it first of all targets this ribosome and it degen denatures all these ribosomes itself so once the ribosomes are denatured getting denatured so completely the epithelial cell will also be getting i would say that damaged itself okay and if this epithelial cell of that of the intestinal region is getting damaged you can imagine what kind of symptoms it may cause it may cause ulcer ulcerations ho sakta hai it may cause like i would say that vomiting it may cause that of uh, like uh, then in the severe critical cases it may cause diarrhea with blood that is a bloody diarrhea itself okay in many of the cases what used to get happened the bowel it always feeling to be full okay that means what hamesha aisa lagta hai ki jo pet hai jo stomach hai it is completely full it's not empty although the stomach is empty okay repeated like uh, i would say that repeated uh, pa passing of the, the fecal matter it used to get occurred over here itself okay and uh, when this shigella it is releasing this cell it will be going inside of that of our blood stream ye yahan par blood stream mein ja ke pahunchta hai now from that of the blood stream it reaches towards our the other organs especially it causes the deadly symptoms when it reaches the kidney we know very well that kidney it is consisting of that of the structural urine preparation units itself and those urine preparation units we are repre representing them as that of the nephron okay so in nephron we are having that of the bowman's capsule the glomerulus the capillaries bringing the blood in and bringing the blood out itself so now what is happening these capillaries they used to consist of that of certain specialized kind of that of the cells which we are are representing it as that of the endothelial cells itself 
Now, whenever these endothelial cells are there, now it has been believed that these endothelial cells may be having certain kind of receptor thing for the, the Shiga toxin itself. And this Shiga toxin, it gets binded upon with that of these endothelial cells. Now, automatically, the soldiers of our body, that means our immune system, what they used to do in order to block in response to that of the Shiga infection itself, what it used to cause, it used to cause that of certain kind of objections within that of their blood itself, like blood clotting and these things they can form. And just see here, blood clotting, internally blood clots, ka formation hota hai, immediately the blood will not be able to pass through. And if blood does pass nahi kar paega, so automatically you can guess that the symptoms through that of the kidney, there will be major vital symptoms can get caused within that of the kidney. Like even renal failure bhi ho sakta hai, urine mein blood ka bhi yaha par pass ho sakta hai and many other kind of other symptoms. So these are all the critical cases and this is the primary level infection in which Shigella first of all enters within that of the GIT and it causes the infection over the cell. Okay, so we'll see all the basic general features itself in that case. Okay, so <clears throat> characteristics, we as we had discussed, it's a non-motile kind of that of the bacterium and a non-spore forming bacterium itself. It's a rod shepherd and a gram negative bacterium. Okay, most importantly, it's a facultative anaerobe and it is having a pH range of that of 6 to 8 and a temperature range of that of 10 to 45 degrees Celsius itself. Okay. And as I said you, the symptoms over present over here, we can say that the major symptoms, abdominal pain, diarrhea, vomiting, even it can get accompanied with that of fever also. It can get accompanied with that of the fever also, okay? Like it, when, when Shigella, it is actually, I would say that when Shigella, it is occurring in that of a milder form, okay, it doesn't require any special kind of that of the treatment itself in normal homely care, normal homely hygienic like staying, only it will be like ensuring the faster recovery from that of the disease. But once Shigella dysentery, our body ke andar mein jata hai, so automatically, अभी हम लोगों ने discuss क्या किया कि shigella dysentery जैसे ही हमारे body के अंदर में infect कर रहा है, automatically kidney में जो reabsorption वाला जो process है, पानी का reabsorption वगैरह का जो process हो जाता है, that gets reduced. Okay, अब जैसे ही पानी के अंदर में reabsorption वगैरह का process जो है, अगर वो वहाँ पर reduced हो जाएगा, so automatically our body will demand more amount of that of the fluid intake itself. So shigella dysentery अगर ये infected होता है हमारे body में it will always require more amount of fluid as well as electrolyte entry or intake within that of our body itself along with some kind of special antibody treatment itself. Okay, do remember about these points. But when, unless until Shigera dysentery is at the entering to that of our body, it is a mild form of that of the, like the shigellosis which is getting caused and like we can see that homely basic care jo hai, that can make the person cure about that of the parts. Okay. Now, how can we isolate whenever shigellosis is been like, I would say the detected, okay. The patients are been like, uh, like uh, the doctors used to prefer like the stool test from the other patient itself. Stool samples are being collected and from the other stool uh, samples itself, the shigella bacteria are been isolated and this thing. Now for identification, we can use typical immunoassay techniques itself, like using like the virulence, a marker antigen, we can detect the shiga toxin and this thing. PCR, we can use kar sakte hai. DNA, DNA hybridization process bhi. <coughs> I'm sorry, DNA DNA hybridization process B, hum log yaha par use kar sakte. Okay. So now, as I said you already priorly itself that this can be caused by or this can be easily transmitted through that of uncooked or rawly consumed food itself in that case. Okay. And by that, we are done about that of the Shigella bacterium itself. We had discussed in detail somewhat detail about that of this battery. It is yaad rakhega, Shigella jo hai, it's such kind of bacterium itself, jo ja kabhi bhi agar hum log koi improperly, like unhygienic way mein prepared food ko agar consume karte hai, always the case is there to go, to get it, it's always having a chance, a probability that it will be getting entered within that of our body. Okay, students, I think so.
this was interesting for you all this was much more knowledgeable for you all next time next day we are meeting very soon next day we will be discussing some we'll be taking up some of the other microbes okay hum log kuch aur microbes ke bare mein dekhenge kuch aur pathogenic microbes ke bare mein dekhenge ye ek microbiology ka session hum log yahan par discuss kar rahe hain jisme we are taking care of that of we'll be taking care of that of the food microbiology section kuch dino ke baad mein medical microbiology sections everything that we'll be trying to see next day we'll be seeing some of the major kind of that of the food microbiological part itself which can act as that of a very deadly pathogen till that time do not forget to subscribe my channel okay do not forget to like uh, completely watch my video